Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia videos. Today we are going to study the act known as Payment of Wages Act 1936. Under this act we are going to study the concepts related to wages. Let us see what are the objectives of the act. The objectives of the Payment of Wages Act are to regulate the payment of wages to certain classes of employed persons. There are twofold objectives. First, it is regarding the payment of wages. Second, it is regarding the deductions from wages, whether as fine or otherwise. Let us see the applicability of this Act. The Act is applicable for the persons who are employed in any factory, that is, a sawmill, a ginning factory, go-downs, yards, etc., as defined in the Factories Act 1948, persons employed in tramway service or motor transport service, engaged in carrying passengers or goods, both by road for hire or reward, people employed in air transport service, dock, war for jetty, inland vessel, mechanically propelled, mine, quarry or oil field plantation, persons employed in workshop or other establishments, etc. For them, the Act of Payment of Wages is applicable. Some important definitions like employed persons, employer and factory, let us see them. Employed person would also include the legal representatives of a deceased employed person. Now here it is important to know that all the definitions like adult, factory, family, youth, employee, employer in labor laws are defined in each and every act. We are just going to see what is added in a particular act. In this act, employer also means the legal representative of a deceased employer. Factory, factory means a factory as defined in clause M of section 2 of the Factories Act 1948, 63 of 1948 and it includes any place to which the provisions of that act have been applied under subsection 1 of section 85 thereof. Industrial or other establishment means tramway service or motor transport service engaged in carrying passengers or goods or both by road for hire or reward. It also includes air transport service other than such service belonging to or exclusively employed in military, naval or air forces of the Union or Civil Aviation Department of the Government of India, dock, war for jetty, inland vessel, mechanically propelled mine, quarry or oil field, plantation, workshop or other establishments in which articles are produced adapted or manufactured with a view to their use, transport or sale. Wages under Payment of Wages Act 1936 is defined as it is a means of all remuneration whether by way of salary, allowances or otherwise which is expressed in terms of money or capable of being so expressed which would if the terms of employment expressed or implied were fulfilled, b. Payable to a person employed in respect of his employment or of work done in such employment and it would also include any remuneration payable under any award or settlement between the parties or order of a court. Any remuneration to which persons employed is entitled in respect of overtime work or holidays or any leave period. It also includes any additional remuneration payable under the terms of employment, whether called a bonus or by any other name. It would include any sum which by reason of the termination of employment of the person employed is payable under any law, contract or instrument which provides for the payment of such sum whether with 
or without deductions but does not provide for the time within which the payment is to be made it would also include any sum to which the person employed is entitled under any scheme framed under any law for the time being in force but it does not include number 1 any bonus whether under a scheme of profit sharing or otherwise which does not form part of the remuneration payable under the terms of employment or which is not payable under any award or settlement between the parties or order of a court the act has the provision for recommending the fixation of wage periods every person responsible for the payment of wages under section 3 shall fix periods in this act referred to as wage period in respect of which such wages shall be payable no wage period such exceed 1 month in short we can say that section 3 of payment of wages act makes it mandatory to make the wage period one wage period as 1 month for the wages to be paid to an employee time of payment of wages the wages of every person employed is paid when less than 1000 persons are employed shall be paid before the expiry of the 7th day of the following month when more than 1000 workers before the expiry of the 10th day of the following month section 5 drawing average wage up to 6500 per month as amended with effect from 6 september 2005 it means that minimum wage payable as per 2005 amendment it is expected that an average wage should be 6500 there is a provision for deduction made from the wages in section 7 which says that deductions such as fine deductions for amenities and services supplied by the employer advances paid overpayment of wages loan granted for house building or other purposes income tax payable in pursuance of the order of the court provident fund contributions cooperative societies premium for life insurance contribution to any fund constituted by employer or a trade union recovery of losses employees state insurance contribution etc deductions for absence from duties for unauthorized absence section 9 recommends absence for whole or any part of the body if 10 or more person remain absent without reasonable cause the deduction applicable is of 8 days fines no fine shall be imposed on any employed person by the employer with the previous approval of the state government or of the save in respect of such acts and omissions on his part as the prescribed authority may have specified by notice under section 2 a notice specifying such acts and omissions shall be exhibited in the prescribed manner on the premises in which the employment is carried on or in case of persons employed upon a railway otherwise than in a factory at the prescribed place or places third no fine shall be imposed on any employed person until he has been given an opportunity of showing cause against the fine or otherwise than in accordance with such procedure as may be prescribed for the imposition of fines number 4 the total amount of fine which may be imposed in any wage period on any employed person shall not exceed an amount equal to 3% of the wages payable to him in respect of that wage period number 5 no fine shall be imposed on any employed person who is under the age of 15 years 6 no fine imposed on any employed person shall be recovered from him by installments 
or after the expiry of 60 days from the day on which it was imposed. Seventh, every fine shall be deemed to have been imposed on the day of the act or omission in respect of which it was imposed. Eight, all fines and all realizations thereof shall be recorded in a register to be kept by the person responsible for the payment of wages. There are certain deductions which are mentioned in the Act, notwithstanding the provisions of subsection 2 of section 47 of the Indian Railways Act 1890, the wages of an employed person shall be paid to him without deductions of any kind of those authorized by or under the Act. Every payment made by the employed person to the employer or his agent shall for the purposes of this act be deemed to be a deduction from wages. Any loss of wages resulting from the imposition for good and sufficient cause upon a person employed on any of the following penalties with the withholding of increment or promotion including the stoppage of increment at an efficiency bar, the reduction to a lower post or time scale or to a lower stage in a time scale, suspension. The other deductions include deductions for recovery of loans, deductions for payment to cooperative societies and insurance schemes, deductions for services rendered, deductions for recovery of advances. Here we have seen the Payment of Wages Act 1936 with special emphasis on the concept of wages and the deductions involved in the Payment of Wages Act. Thanks for watching Edupedia videos.